There are three things that make for wealth in this kingdom. Number one is to walk with your hands. I know many times when we talk about prosperity, we begin with giving. If you are only dealing on this subject, on the plane of giving, you are standing on one foot. You will be drowned. You can never go far in this kingdom if you don't have something you are doing with your hands. That idea of telling you, just give and you will prosper, is a scam. Everybody prospering in this kingdom is doing something. And I will show you from scripture, the people you quote, go and check their life. They, do so, they did something. Paul the apostle, for example, who is the apostle of grace, he did something, he counseled the church to do something, he thought doing something with your hands. Because when you have nothing to do, you make it difficult for God to bless you. It becomes easy for God to bless you when you have something to do. There is no spirit that can prosper a man who is doing nothing. The only thing a spirit may use you to do is to produce one that through you. So they may get you to do something that obviously looks as if it cannot prosper you. And while you are yet doing that thing, they begin to blow you open. But by all means, you must do something. Without doing something, there can be no prosperity in view. And when you are doing something, there is a how to do whatever it is that you are doing. In fact, when you look at the life of Paul, who is the arch apostle of grace, he was a workaholic. So Paul prospered not just by grace. Paul prospered by walking. In Acts chapter 20 verse 34, Paul was speaking to the church and he said, Ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessity and to them that were with me. He said, this my very hands. That's an apostle. He didn't sit down idle and say, I'm an apostle of Jesus. People are bringing offering and tithe. He said, these hands, these hands, they have labored to provide for my necessity. And if an apostle of Jesus who is legitimately qualified to receive offerings and prophetic seed have to put his own hands to work it means you are joking idling away we have a generation of people today who just lock themselves up in the cave and they pray in tongues for eight months and when they come out they come out and become fake prophets and scammers because no matter how spiritual they are they cannot deny the fact that they need clothes to wear and something to eat and when they can no longer get those things they close their eyes and say an angel is talking to them and they say bring what you have you are having this in your pocket bring it out you are a thief <laughs> you are a terrible thief and if you don't repent the wrath of God will soon come on you for bringing reproach to the name of Jesus Christ I walked with my hands and you have to start from somewhere listen I have a master's degree there was nothing to do and God forced me to stay in Makodi I was in Makodi for five years while I was in Makodi, I was teaching in a school earning 25,000 naira with master's degree. Because I know, instead of lying down at home and prophesying and praying in tongues, hoping that one day God will lift me and start giving me millions, it is important I did something at the time. And so for five years, I was earning 25,000. And because I was earning something, I had no need to beg anybody. I had money to pay for my transport. I had money to eat what I needed to eat. And with that 25,000 naira, I registered for my PhD. And I was doing it. I was lecturing in a Bible school and I was preaching as an itinerant preacher. Many people lazy around and because they have tendency of scamming, they sit down idle telling people that they are men of God. This is why the body is not experiencing the level of dignity and power she should have amongst the nations of the world. Paul the apostle walked with his hands. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 12, Paul was talking about himself and he said, I labor, walking with my own hands, being revived, we blessed, being persecuted, we suffered it. That means even in the times of persecution, Paul was still walking. Hope you know he was a tent maker. The man is a tent maker. As I'm talking to you, I have lungs that I bought from my savings and when it goes up I will sell them I'm not here preaching I, that's why I can go anywhere and talk anything God puts in my heart I didn't come for your honorarium you will never have integrity if you have nothing doing 
People can manipulate you. I went to preach somewhere because the man saw somebody drop crutches. He came to me and said, uh, 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 they, they, I should call for a seed. I said, I don't call for seeds. I'm a revivalist. I come to set men on fire. If you want people to sow seed, teach them about the covenant of giving. When they learn it, they will give by revelation and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. They will not be coerced to give. And if you have not taught them that, I will not coerce them to give because if they give, there will be no reward. And if there's no reward, they will become frustrated. Hope you know what people can do when they see somebody drop crutches and start working. They can go and take their house rent and come and give and say, no, the level of anointing I saw here, something will happen. But they are not doing it from revelation or from the leading of the Holy Spirit. And after three months, when the landlord ejects them, they will come and say, God is not faithful. Because we will make many become atheists by not teaching them the truth. If you are here today and you are idling away, you can never prosper no matter the prophecies we give you. You must get something doing with your hands. Because when God comes to bless you, there must be a contact place. Paul walked with his hand. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 12, he said, I have learned to abound and to abase. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I have learned to abound and to abase. The guy knew how to survive in Peri. Paul will come to a city to preach and while he's in that city, he's making tents. He met Priscilla and Aquila in the market. He didn't meet them in the synagogue. He met them at his working place. Don't find yourself idling away because somebody told you that you will deliver the nations, that you are an apostle to America and then you are sleeping, you are seeing dollars. <laughs> Number two, Paul prescribed walking with your hands. He didn't only walk, he prescribed it. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 to 12, he said, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not walk, neither should he eat. It's not every service that is a fire service. There's a service that is an instruction service. He said, if you will not walk, don't eat. And in verse 12, he said, for we hear, that there are some which walk among you disorderly. That's what he called them. Those who are doing nothing. That's why they loaf around and they are every gossip they are in it. If you walk for six to eight hours a day, you will not have energy for gossip. Because you know if you are not at work by 7.15, you will be queried. And when you are coming back from work by four o'clock, the remaining hours you have, you will think where to use it. It's because you woke up around 10. And you have nowhere to go to. That's why you can call somebody and say, did you hear what they are saying about matter? You are, you are an idle man. The devil is walking inside you. You are a workshop. When you start walking, you will not have time for those things. He said, now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they walk and eat their own bread. Does this mean Paul is not aware that God gives favor? He knows. But there's got to be a point of contact. I know you may not have a job yet. Whatever it is that you are, you are, you can do. Keep start doing it. And if there is nothing you can do, go and register for skill acquisition. Learn something and start doing it. Some people come and say, "Kai, their work is is, is affecting their prayer altar. They ah, they can't pray. They can't pray." Since you started working, when was the last time you prayed for six hours in a day? So they stop working and they increase the time of idleness. And even those who are working, there is nobody working on earth that have not at least six to eight hours to spare. There's not one person. Even presidents of nations take time to nap. They take time to go fishing. They take time to stroll around. And World Health Organization said five hours of sleep is healthy. That means you are supposed to sleep by 12 and wake up by 5 a.m. And I don't know the work you are doing that you walk up to 11 midnight. Even if you close from work by 8 p.m., you have four hours between 8 and 12. And you have one hour between 6, 7 before you go to work. There is nobody that have an excuse that his work is affecting his prayer life. Your hunger have died. Go and find hunger. Idleness in the church. You come to a place, you find 1,000 graduates. All of them wake up in the morning. Ho, 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 ho. From morning to night. And they do it for, for four years. I'm not against it if God sent you there for a season. You are following divine instruction. But to go and lock your life down for five years. Ho, 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 ho. Later you now go and marry a lady who is doing well. And begin to scam her money. That the Holy Ghost told you that she should bring her money. 
<laughs> this is a serious matter. Don't take it for granted. That's why I'm taking my time to address every point. We have too many lazy believers. And that's why the people of the world are making, they are just going ahead. Going ahead. They understand how the systems work. Somebody has no job. He's too proud to teach. Me, I should go and teach in the secondary school. What do you have? Who is you? He has nothing to it. Tell him, go and sell clothes. He said, me? You can't sell, but you are begging. Which is more honorable? Oh boy, how far? I, I beg, if you get 2,000 there, man, you know easy. And you can't sell clothes. You are a big man. And you are begging. You are coming to church. You want to lead prayer. You go and borrow suit. And then you are acting as if God is helping you. <laughs> we are deceived in the church. I was telling some of the guys working with me. Brother Reward took over the TV project. And in three days, they walked around the clock. Everything was set. It's not part of those who came and say it's all about tongues. He has never missed a meeting. He attends all the prayer meetings. He's part of those praying online. But there is something about the mindset. They know the value of time. Come and find most of these brothers that only speak in tongues. Give them a walk. They will come back with excuses again and again and again. Put them on the job. It will either fail or you fire them. And then when you hire those who can do it, they say, this person, he doesn't have a kindred spirit. How can you go and rent, hire somebody who is not a believer? Do you know the job? And every day we gather, we want to pray in tongues. Ooh, 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 and fall down. Now that you are falling down for five years, what has happened to you? And we think revival is all about shouting. If there is no economic boom, we will be raising the dead. Nobody will hear about it. Did you not read about our brothers in the world? He woke up on his birthday. He said, they needed, if you love me, send me one million. And in less than 24 hours, in less than 24 hours, million was not 10, it was not 20, it was not 30. And in about five days, he raised over 250 million. That's his cycle. You check, probably none of them is speaking in tongues. But if they want to bring something into Abuja, they can shut down the youths of Abuja. They can shut down this city. And half of your church members will go there to attend the party. They don't need to pray for 30 days for God to bring the souls. They will invade the whole space and shut down the city. And 70% of the people who will be in the show will be Christians. Because they know what to do. They know what to touch. We are lazing around. And it's pathetic. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, Paul said, And that ye study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands as we have commanded you. It's not an advice. As we have commanded you, he said, Work with your own hands. Our own idea of grace is to exonerate us from every responsibility. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28, it says, Let him that stole steal no more, but walk with his hands that he may have to give. He was talking to a thief. A thief in church after all. And he said, he said stop stealing. And then the thief will say, okay, he will think he will give him a job or give him money. He said, now that you have stopped stealing, go and walk. And he said, when you are done working, get money and help the poor. What a commandment. You don't know this, you idle away. It's when you are 60 years old, you will weep. There's nothing wrong in praying or shutting down to pray. Especially if it's by divine instruction. God will use it to advance revival. But you will not be part of it. That's the, that's the repercussion. You've got to wake up and labor. Don't idle away. You can be praying in tongues on your job. You can be a medical doctor. You are going into the theater praying in tongues. Your job is not on your lips. You can be in the market selling clothes. 
you are selling, you are speaking in tongues. In fact, it's actually a sign that you are spiritually mature because you can carry your atmosphere everywhere. It's not only when you come to church and people are praying that you are in the spirit. While you are here driving, you are in the spirit. While you are in the market, you are in the spirit. And he gives one. Did you not know about the sons of the born woman? In fact, the reason they walk is to give them opportunity to enter every nook and cranny of the state. So most of the people you call shoe shiners, wheelbarrow pushers, water sellers, they are not. They are astrologers. But they need something that legitimizes they are walking into the neighborhood. So as they are shining shoes in people's compound, they are chanting incantation. So they can carry their atmosphere into their office. They can carry their atmosphere into their job. But you are the only person that thinks your own atmosphere is created when you are in church. They come to your neighborhood that they are doing shoe shining. They are selling water. It's a lie. When they enter your compound to shine your shoe, they drop incantation there. When they enter the streets, they drop incantation there. They know how the spirit realm works. We are religious people. We don't even have spiritual intelligence. Who told you the banking sector will be delivered if you are not there speaking in tongues? Who told you the medical world will be delivered if you are not there speaking in tongues? You are not just taking the job to survive. The job becomes a platform for expressing ministry. Because ministry is not only in the church. That's why today everybody who is on fire is either an apostle or a prophet. You can be an active politician and like Daniel, three times in a day you pray facing Jerusalem. The political corridor becomes a platform for exercising ministry. This is why Paul insists that everyone must work with his hand. Everyone. Number three, why must we work? There is reward for every labor. That means if you don't work, you can receive a gift. If you don't work, you can receive a token. But if you want to walk in the corridor of reward, you must labor. Because reward is not a gift. Reward is the just recompense for services rendered. So those who walk in the realm of rewards are those who are working. Many people can receive handouts. They can receive tokens. They can receive gifts. But if you want to be stable in life, you must find something doing because only by walking can you be entitled to reward proverbs 14 verse 23 they say in all labor there is profit they say but the talk of the lips tended to penury the reason we are talking and becoming poor is because we are not working they say but if you need profit or if you want to work in profit then you must pay the price to labor in all labor there is profit in galatians 6 verse 9 he said, and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That means those who reap are those who render services. That's why it's a waste of time to envy. You can go for a meeting with somebody, and I've experienced it a lot of time. They put me and the preachers on the same poster. Sometimes I'm even more well posted. And when we go for the poster, they carry the preacher and put in a presidential suit. And then they put me in one room, and I'm saying, well, since you have dishonored me, don't expect so much to happen in this meeting. When I finish with my anger, the Holy Ghost will now tell me that you have not arrived there yet. So they are operating with you based on your level. If you want to be there, grow. Because you'll be angry and say, are we not all on the same poster? Are we not all preachers? Now you are expecting me to come and manifest. So it's not about manifestation. It's about growth. It's about capacity. Because some of these men will come and will not manifest. But that they came for the conference, the ministry will shift. The people who invited them know. So if you like, come and shout and run around the altar. Your honorarium will be one tenth of the other person who spoke in the Sometimes when they are speaking, they drink water. You are talking, the whole church is shaking, everybody is jumping. When you finish jumping, when they are taking you to the hotel, they will take the man in convoy. They will take you in one hundred court. If it pains you, grow up. Don't be high-minded. It's simple. That's how life works. You receive to the degree of your contribution. If you are not adding value, you cannot receive nothing. The value you add is what determines what you receive. That's why we work and why working, we are improving on a daily basis. I remember when I will go for a meeting. I will preach heaven down. Oh, Jesus. If I start preaching once in a week, you can't sit down. The energy I come into the meeting with. I, I see I, I went for one meeting as I was preaching people were running literal fire was on people meanwhile in this meeting they pleaded with me that the transport arrangement they had something went wrong that if I can get cab 
I'm guest minister, I should get cab. I said, okay, let's believe their story. When I came, I preached fire. When I finished, they now walked me to another cab and said, thank you so much. They paid for the cab as a sign of honor. They now gave me an envelope. When I opened it, it was 3,000. The cab I picked to the meeting was 2,000 naira. To show you the distance. And they gave me 3,000. Jesus. What is the meaning of this? I got so mad. <laughs> and God will tell you, keep quiet. Sometimes when you are angry like that, the scripture will now pop up to remind you that if you say something, you may lock your future season. So you will just keep that anger because spirits are waiting for you to talk. They walk with your utterances. So a scripture will quickly advise you, keep quiet. If you say something now, it may be the reason why you will not be promoted. And now I heard my peace. I started growing. Few years later, I go for a meeting. I speak for one session. They give me two million. No shouting, no drama. I speak for evening, speak in the morning. They give me three million. And they are giving it with honor. With so much honor. I'm coming for a meeting. They book business class. I miss the flight. They charter a private jet. And say, pick him to come. I'm coming to talk sometimes for one hour, 30 minutes. What is the difference? You kept at what you are doing and you kept improving. As you are growing in it, the reward begins to grow. People sit down idle and they are telling God for the day he will open the door. That day will never come. It will never come. I'm telling you why we are not prospering. We master the wrong things. In Psalm 128 verse 2, he said, For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. He said, Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. You will eat of the labor of thy hands. Prosperity does not begin and end with giving and receiving. You've got to work with your hands. Don't allow your destiny to be scammed. At old age, you will weep. In Proverbs 16 verse 3, he said, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. In Proverbs 21 25, he said, The desire of the slothful killeth him. He said, For his hands refuse to labor. For the man that labors, he said, his thoughts shall be established. He said, but for the slothful, his desire will kill him because his hands refuse to labor. You want to walk in honorable and true prosperity, you must find something doing with your hands. That's the foundation of prosperity and prosperity with integrity. I told you from the beginning, for you to prosper, you must walk by mysteries and you must walk by instructions. If you violate these instructions, you will travel from coast to coast, receive all the impartation. You will be shocked what your life will become.